Hey everybody, welcome back to Hit Point, a JRPG news show, a anime news show, a manga, merch, uh, niche news, anything really that interests Baku and I, we're going to talk about it and I'm not going to screw up the intro today. How are you doing today, Baku? Good to see you. I'm doing great, uh, <laughs> even though this is going to be the most tired you'll probably ever see me. Uh, why why is that? Great. Why? Why? Because why was why are you so tired, because, Baku? Because I actually work today. What? Like Sundays when I don't work. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's not Sunday? Just... <laughs> oh, my God. It's not Sunday. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, I guess that explains the low turnout. Anyway, hey, everybody. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being with us today. Uh, if you're wondering, why the heck is Baku and Derek streaming uh, Hit Point on a, a Thursday? Uh, well, here's why. It's because... I'm going to be away uh, this weekend, and then we were going to do a makeup stream a little later, but then uh, Baku was going to be busy during those days, so we're like, yeah, whatever, we'll just do an early one. So, hey, yeah, you get to see us twice this week. Good. Twice in a week. Well, it's probably <laughs> going to be a little bit of a shorter episode today, I think, a little bit a lighter uh, on the on the, you know, we haven't had all of the days of the week to, to talk about news about, but hey... Baku, we did get some pretty cool news so far, though. So what would you say is today's leading headline? Uh, did you know that E3 is getting taken over? Oh, like, uh? like, like a hostile takeover. I don't know if it's hostile, but they're definitely being taken over. That's pretty cool because I'm hostile toward E3 and I'd love to see them getting taken over. We'll talk about that but a little later on. And uh, <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we will actually uh, not. I, I don't think we have any comments from last week to discuss at this point but we actually did get a voicemail so um if you want to leave us a voicemail you can do so at 785-337-3805 but in the meantime here's this one hey guys my name is josh i'm from virginia here in the u.s love your show and getting to hear about video games and rpgs and anime news every week uh, my question for you guys is about your thoughts on the current state of collector's editions i love my collector's editions and personally i was super excited for the xenoblade chronicles 3 collector's edition but was pretty disappointed to find out it didn't come out with a soundtrack or anything like that i know it's still hard to get and everybody was going after it but it mm -hmm. just didn't feel like it came with as much stuff as yeah. mm. uh, xenoblade 2 did and mm. i'm looking forward to the new jojo game in their collector's edition, but it just comes with a statue. So um, <laughs> kind of what are you guys' thoughts on those uh, collector's editions and uh, the stuff what makes you want to buy collector's editions? Also, I'm sure you guys will probably talk about it, but Sony announced that their God of War collector's editions are going to come with a lot of cool stuff, even a steel book, mm -hmm. but not even the physical game. I guess it's probably just because... Um, they're coming to PS4 and PS5, yeah. and some people have digital PS5s. Yeah. But as a collector, it's kind of disappointing to me that I don't get the physical game. Do you guys think there's a better mm. way they could handle the distribution of those collector's editions come in with games? And lastly, yeah. just a fun one, a uh, fun question for you guys. What are some of your favorite collector's editions? I still think my favorite is probably Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, but I also really love the working designs ones from oh, yeah. PS1. Uh, all their collector's editions are really cool. The Lunar one is probably my favorite, but Lunar 2, Ark the Lad, they're definitely prized possessions in my collection. So anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. Keep up the good work, guys. Thanks. Bye. Well, thank you for awesome. that awesome voicemail there, Joshua. Um, so uh, that was that was a <laughs> lot. That was a lot of questions. Where do we start? So that was... Um, Oh my gosh. Were well, so, you taking notes? Because I, I took mental notes, but uh, you know. Mental notes, but uh, my, my mental note paper is kind of worn and, and dusty. I haven't. Uh, anyway, so it was collector's editions, you know? Collector editions, yes. Yeah. Okay. And how, well, how they I, kind I of kinda... weak and, and. Well, some of them are kind of weak, some of them are awesome, and it's kind of all yeah. over the place. He, he, I guess, just kind of curious about our, our thoughts about the state of, mm -hmm. of the current collector's the edition. The state of the collector's edition. I think they're hurting, honestly. 
mm-hmm. personally speaking. Um, I feel like the collector's editions, like, uh, I, I think he nailed it with Lunar being one of my favorites of all time. Actually, Lunar 2 specifically, because it had the hard book, uh, the hardback bound manual. It had cloth map and an amulet. It had feelies is what they used to call these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. They would help you further immerse yourself into the world. This is something that dates back to, you know, gosh, early PC games, like RPGs. And they were they were really awesome, but uh yeah, if if oh gosh, Lunar even came with a soundtrack disc. <laughs> like built oh my in God. like they packed that thing. Working designs packed that thing full yeah. of of awesome stuff. But um yeah, what do you think? What do you think though? I mean, I think you probably get a few more collector's editions than I do currently these days. Uh well, um, well, first of all, uh, you know, uh, Josh from Virginia, U.S., uh, <laughs> thank you for listening to the show. We are also from the U.S., so that's why I was laughing about it. <laughs> it's just like, how nice of you to clarify. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, as opposed to all the other, there actually might be other Virginias, though, isn't there? Like, Are there other Virginias, right? <laughs> I bet there is, because it's named after the... The 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 queen, I think of of England the of the time, queen. who was supposedly a virgin or something, <laughs> for forever. Um, <laughs> and, and I didn't think that's like a good thing to like glorify, but you know, it, like weird, like fifteenth century people, right? Anyways, yeah. um, so back to the question, and there were a couple. Uh, let me just take it a step at a time, right? Uh, answering your first question, the state of the the, the, the or maybe the decline in offering in uh the limited edition uh, probably has a lot to do with, um, you know, our logistic chain right now. And just, you know, COVID has uh, basically uh, made that a lot worse, producing anything physical, which these limited editions usually entail, uh, Mm -hmm. costs a lot more to produce. uh, And as a result is either they take a loss or they would, uh, need to price it a lot more. Uh, an alternative is to just give you less things. And and again, the reason is because just producing anything at all is, you know, being exponentially uh, more expensive. Every part of the assembly of a package costs more. So it's not like, well, add like a $5 tax to things. Like, no, this little bit's going to cost more and this little bit's going to cost more and this little bit's going to cost more. Everything in the supply chain costs more. Mm-hmm. So it, it it compounds, right? Um, so I think they, they're left, uh, so they're left with two realistic choices. Either A, they give you less things or B, they don't do any collector's edition at all, which... Uh, as you will see from some of the games that we talk about later, uh, that's the approach that Square Enix has taken for some things, um, yeah. but not others. But we'll talk about that. Um, I think you raised a pretty question. good point there about how costly things are. And um, and I feel like one of the reasons that Lunar 2 uh, in particular had such an awesome collector's edition, uh, the the complete edition was, um, mm-hmm. this, this was 90s money, right? Yeah. If, if, we're, if we're talking about Let's keep that in mind. 90s money was about twice as powerful as as today's money, and games mm-hmm. still cost about the same price. Um, so they had a, a bit more overhead that they could work with back then. Um, and I guess, like, unless you're willing to spend, you know, 120 bucks on a collector's edition, I suppose that you probably shouldn't, or, or more than 120, you probably shouldn't expect that level of, like, unique, small print run sorts of items and small... Because, because that's the other thing is that collectors' editions, by def- by definition, are are limited editions. They're limited run. They're very small mm-hmm. print runs, and those cost like an order of magnitude more per unit than mass produced items. Yes, because absolutely scale is what what is what makes things so much less expensive when they are produced at scale. It's uh, it's just because you can basically copy and print, or copy and paste mm-hmm. a bunch of times, and have the factory run a few more rounds. But mm-hmm. all the tooling and stuff that you'd have to do for manufacturing those things, that's that's a one-time cost, regardless of how many you do, basically. Um, yeah. And it's not cheap. So so that's another another thing to to kind of dovetail into what you're talking about there, Baku. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the reason why volume discounts a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Who who knew that you can come through a, like a game uh, podcast and start talking about economics, right? <laughs> what this is this is I thought this was mm-hmm. a Hololive podcast. 
<laughs> Hollow Life. Oh, but... is it Hollow Life? Okay. Well... Hollow Life. <laughs> oh, but you can watch more over at Weep Sauce. Um, okay, so second question um, is, uh, you know, what what are some of our favorites? Or is is that the second question? Um, uh, no, no, oh, no. no was... the, se the second question was, uh, you know, things about. Um, that doesn't come with the game. What yeah, about that? The collector's right? edition that come with everything but the game. Uh, yeah, that yeah. that sounds crazy. And I think that Fluffy Dogs had a perfect response to that. And that's that if you're going to mm -hmm. do something like that, uh, offer, do, do what the movie industry does. You know, give you the physical disc and a download code. <laughs> I, you know, I, I actually support the idea of, producing uh without the game and just sending it uh separately and you will see that oh uh, like what we'll, nintendo we'll talk about, with uh oh uh, we'll, yeah, yeah basically like what nintendo is doing okay. i'm actually okay with that because from a logistic standpoint that makes more sense uh and because now you don't you don't have to wait for an extra component to then package into a whole thing so you can produce them separately you can even ship them separately uh, but also, I feel like what they should do, instead of calling it limited edition, you should call it like a collector's like uh, bundle, like, sort of like a collector's bundle. pack. Yeah, collector's pack, collector's bundle, where you have this thing, like uh, you can buy the, this like commemorative, like, you know, item yeah. set. You like, know, I do like that items. idea. So it's not yeah. so much like you're buying a collector's edition of the game. You're you're saying, mm -hmm. you're saying you know, buy the game, sure, everybody's going to buy the game, but then mm -hmm. there's this limited collection this box that would mm -hmm. complete the the collector's edition essentially right, that doesn't include right. the game that yeah that's yeah yeah that's you smart send, you just buy the game separate it's fine yeah uh, that and, makes sense and, and as, a, as a matter of fact i think it, it, it makes even more sense if you can just buy all of them separate i can buy the game i can buy the commemorative have i can buy them both at a discount so now you bundle it together right so yeah because i would just want the soundtracks and i would off probably just want the feelies the yeah the, that's fine the acrylic standees i could probably leave <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like that's also the thing is that the the things that we would want out of those packs are the things that are expensive um yeah and and the other things that they throw in are just throw-ins to you know add yeah. to the to the list of stuff included right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right i mean hey but it's it's sort of a that's a perfect for perfect that that to me is actually very pro-consumer it's not you know it, it is very pro-consumer and it makes more sense from a production standpoint so it in in my mind is more win-win than forcing you to have to buy it you know and have to have it shipped all together yeah um but you know you guys let us know what you guys think in the comments, man, because we'd love to hear, you know, what y'all think would be like a good, like, solution to all this. All right. Uh, oh, ready and to then move on to that last. Yeah. Yeah. The last one. Favorite ones. I, I already I already said Lunar 2 was my favorite. The pendant that you the Lucia's pendant. That was so cool. Yeah. And the soundtrack. I love soundtracks also. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to when collector's edition start including uh, LPs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Man, the, the day that happens. Um, <laughs> yeah, in, in recent memories, uh, I think my, some of my favorite one, uh, there's this thing called Death and Request 2, uh, where they bundle a light novel that bridges the two games together. That's pretty creative, you know, and, and, you know, it doesn't cost a whole lot. You just print like a small paperback book. I mean, but it adds a lot of value, right? It's like, yeah. oh yeah. Well, wonder what happens in the story in between. Well, he's the light novel. It's like, oh sweet. That's really cool. Uh, another really cool one is uh near replicant. Uh, the, that one had like these like metallic pins. It had like the English scripts inside. It had the CDs. It, it's just like the whole nine yard. I'm just like, wow, Square, you went big on this one. And it's a huge box. I kept looking back because I'm like, do I want to like up so I can show them to you? <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. Um, no, you can do that and, on the web. Show it off on your, your web sauce channel. Everybody make sure you check out web sauce. Yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, I, I think last but not least, most recently, the coolest one, I think, is the Ida Stomnium File uh, Nirvana uh, Initiative, because that one actually includes a Papa Parade figure. So it's Ooh. a collaboration between Spike Chunsoft and 
a uh, good small company uh, to make a Papa Prey figure of Aiba, which is a uh, essential character. So that's super neat. So that's the actual like high quality figure that goes in. So imagine, for example, if you will, uh, a, a trails of game that has like a Papa Prey of like Estelle, right? Like, okay, that'd be pretty rad. Fans would be ecstatic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just imagine that. That's the that's the level of hype that that particular uh, bundle uh, came with. So uh, I I think um, you know in in the future, at least for a lot of Japanese companies, they can look to that and maybe Falcom could uh, you know work with good small company because they're 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 more than happy to you know. Uh, lend their services to design and to bundle like a small figure that would come with these games. I think that's like a a, a good value proposition for uh, mm -hmm. some folks, at least. As long as they don't value, as long as they don't uh, partner with the people who made that Kingdom Hearts figure that I showed off the other week. <laughs> yeah, oh, never that, <laughs> never that, never uh, that. That sounds like you had way better. Uh, collector's editions in mind than i do unfortunately i need to up my collector's edition games so to speak yeah. anyways hey thank you so much again for that voicemail and again if you guys want to leave us a voicemail to have it listened to on the air and have us talk about the stuff you ask us about uh you can do so at again 785-337-3805 and we'll uh we'll play it on the next one yeah absolutely um, I, I do have one, uh, you know, and this is my fault because I usually look for, uh, comments. I'll read one comment so, so oh, okay. we, we don't break tradition. Okay. Sure. Uh, this is from Jackson Holden. Uh, he says, uh, us with Mills, I despised rabbits until I play Mario rabbits. Now I'm absolutely adore them. The distinct way they present them in a crossover is very likable. It is a really good game uh which is the game that we covered uh last hit point so mm -hmm. yeah definitely check out if you guys are a big fan of um xcom and you just really hated that rng because god that rng uh check out uh rabbit uh and mario because that game is that game is fun yeah i'll but... say that often about mario games <laughs> yeah that's yeah i and i feel like i hated the rabbits as well because my my first introduction to them was like some gosh what was it some wii title where like it was oh it's like a bunch of mini games right yeah a bunch of mini games and yeah i i don't even remember much about it just like there was like a, a not a, a there was a rhythm based one where you like shake the the nunchuck and the wiimote and rhythm mm -hmm. with something and i was like uh, okay what what are they doing <laughs> with mario and why is this an rpg like that's that's where my headspace is mm -hmm. and I, maybe if i gave it a shot like like that person said maybe i would also uh maybe they would grow on me I'll oh this game is fun like never mind the rabbit just like ignore any of the character choices just the game itself is fun yeah yeah all right well just that that's so that we don't break tradition thank you again okay also and uh i forgot to mention this before but also we will be responding to super chats at the end of today's episode as well um yes and I also forgot to ask Baku, uh, what have you been doing this week? Do you stream? Where do you stream? And what, what are you I doing do, these do days? Do I stream? Do I stream? I certainly do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I am currently streaming Persona 4 Golden over at uh, twitch.tv uh, slash Bakasan JRPG. I have a thing for a second, like twitch.com. I was like, no, it's not twitch.com. Twitch what? <laughs> twitch.tv slash Pakistan JRPG, uh, where you will find me streaming Persona 4 Golden. As a matter of fact, I'll be streaming uh, after this podcast, uh, maybe like 30 minutes or so afterwards, but I'll be over there. Uh, I'm also uh, working on a new YouTube channel, which, by the way, oh, great news. As of today, as of today, I finally got my unique uh, URL. It oh, is, really? uh, yeah, it is youtube.com slash weep sauce. So no more crazy letters, right? You can just type youtube.com slash weep sauce and you'll find me um where we'll cover of course weep news uh weekly so uh things that you don't really hear things that are a little bit more niche just really rapid fire uh really quick get it out uh and move on with your day uh so if that sounds like something that you're interested in come on by and hang out over there awesome thanks thanks baku yeah you know, what are you doing Mr. Well, Mr. Derek, I've been busy. I I'm still working on videos. I haven't put anything out, and I haven't streamed. I'm I'm bad, and I feel bad. <laughs> you should. You okay. promised people new videos. I remember. 
I, I know. We can watch the last uh, hit point. We I'm, can find. I'm, oh, there will be a new video coming out. I am like, oh, okay. I, I am working on a video about <laughs> Breath of Fire that I'm hoping to release tomorrow afternoon. So keep your eyes Ooh. peeled for that. Uh, unless I don't do it, Saturday. but I should. I should have it out. <laughs> no, because Saturday I'm on the road already. So it's it's oh, no, tomorrow. I'm saying or I, I'm gonna watch it on Saturday because oh, okay. I'm out all day tomorrow. But I'll be watching it on Saturday. And I, when I open YouTube on Saturday, I better find a new video on my feed with with your name on it. Or else there will be heck to pay. <laughs> there, there will be pitchforks and 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 torches on on Twitter. I'm sure. <laughs> Speaking of pitchforks on Twitter, Baku, do you want to take on this next? Uh... <laughs> oh boy. Okay. You know what? Like, listen. Do not. Don't don't hurt the messenger. Okay. Just I I want everyone to just calm down and remain calm. Uh, but I do have some bad news uh, as far as uh, some games is concerned. Well, this one game, uh, Forspoken, is now uh, delayed for the second time. And <sighs> thank God. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. I mean, well, you know, <laughs> maybe, close. maybe it's not maybe it's not really bad news, right? But I know. We'll so so okay. So October is so packed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. So Forspoken was originally set to go on sale. Uh, you know, in May. Then that got pushed to uh, October 11th, and we're just like, oh crap, there's a lot of game happening. And October, October is what starts? Uh, Divine Forces October. Yeah. Divine Forces October. Uh, so, isn't in, in fact, Live this Alive is, this is also early in October? October? Live Alive is no, Live Alive is a week before. Uh, or is that a August? Week before S Xenoblade. Okay. Yeah. Um, Xeno Xenoblade and uh, oh. Digimon Survive is the same day. Then you know what? A week before that is Life Alive. You know what this reminds me of? Think about it. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? How we have that uh, that spreadsheet that you've been working on that yes. uh, keeps track of every every game that we've spoken about. Yes, and more. <laughs> there were comments Even games that we haven't talked about. I know there were there were comments on the last video asking about that and. I think that we might actually put that out and make it public if if anybody else is really curious and and mm -hmm. that would also probably be really handy for us to, to for quick reference during the show. I haven't I haven't had a time I haven't had time to really think about it. Like I saw that I and I'm like I'm work I, I I'm digesting it, but I just haven't had time to like really work on it. Baku, why do you yeah. have a full time job? You should quit your job so you can do this full time. So so I can keep a uh, working sheet of just RPGs to come yes. out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days um yeah so um what was i gonna say uh yeah so this game is being delayed again uh now the new launch day is gonna be january 24 2023 so maybe a side of relief for a lot of us honestly because again just uh, september october is insane pack and you will see why uh once we talk to some other games now, no specific reasons are provided for the delay. Uh, Square Enix stated that this is the result of ongoing discussions with key partners, whatever that means, uh, and that this is a strategic decision. My honest guess is that the game is already done and yeah. they had just realized that October, September is insane pack. Mm -hmm. Why would we release another game? Yeah, uh, that's exactly my thoughts know, as well when they said strategic, like, <laughs> a strategic yeah. decision. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'll. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I guess. Because <laughs> October, man, this entire second, this this whole second half of the year is just gonna be one hit after the next. So, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Xenoblade, Digimon Survive, Live Alive, uh, Trails of Trails from Zero for anyone who's been waiting for the oh, official yeah. release. Uh, and as you will hear, uh, Valkyrie, uh, Elysium, Dial's Field, uh, you name it. This, I'm not even talking about indies right now. I'm just I know, talking and about, that's like, and that's the other half is I'm that the indies are going nuts. <laughs> I've not even included indies yet. God, okay, but yeah. Speaking so of there indies, you go. That's the play. Mm -hmm. Sea of Stars. Uh, you know, last last week, this week. Sunday, we talked about how they were being delayed a little bit, and uh, uh, well, that is unfortunately still the case, everybody, but um, we do have some good news, and that is that the game was just announced that, I think it was just announced today, right? 
Uh, it started it yesterday. yesterday or today. Okay, yeah. Oh, yesterday or today, yeah. they announced that it's coming to PS4 and PS5. Um, right. And with with cross with cross platform purchasing, I, I think where where basically you if you buy PS4, you can play on PS5, which is mm -hmm. super cool. Uh, and yeah. I think they also dropped a new trailer. Yeah, let's take a look. All right, I'm just so excited for this. God, this trait. Oh, it looks so good. I can't even look yeah, at it. Yeah, it looks really good. Oh. Like, what the actual heck? I know. I, like, just, the earlier trailers look good, but this... I don't know, like, this new trailer looks like... It has like in-game fishing! It does have in-game fishing. Or else, is it really... Is it really JRPG if it has no fishing? No. I am playing the heck out of this. Oh my god. I'm playing... I will play the heck out of this. This looks phenomenal. What is... Oh, that is so cool. That is really cool, dude. Okay, so you get to control what stats to increase. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at that overworld. I know, the overworld, this looks so good. At the, the port, the character portrait looks great. Yeah, they do. Solstice <laughs> Warrior. Oh, the enemy looks really cool, too. I love it, the design. It's just so yeah, dang everything clean. Everything about this is great. It's so I clean. Know. Hey, listen. Uh, oh, listen, what, what? Uh, what? 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 That's the second part of the trailer. Oh. Uh. That is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So are you buying the collector's edition of that, by the way? Because I totally is am. There a is, there, is there a collector's edition? Not yet. They haven't announced <laughs> it yet, but I'm buying it. I I am going to make one. My uh, if they don't do it, I'll make gonna, my own make collector's own? edition with my 3D printer and my <laughs> CD burner, and I will make a soundtrack from burn from YouTube rips. I don't uh, I don't care. I will do it. You, you can print some. We can print some shirts. Print some shirts for that. Uh, that would probably get me sued. That will get you sued. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you print it yourself. You know, that would yourself. actually be a really interesting idea for like yeah. a YouTube video project. Just like a, oh. I made my, <laughs> I made my own project, my own collector's edition with <laughs> figures and a soundtrack and I don't know, uh, a, an instruction manual or something. That'd be pretty interesting. I, I could probably do that. Um, okay. Be so interesting um, art project. But anyways, what were you going to yeah. say? Uh, yeah. You know, so hey, you know, by the off chance that uh the developers of CF Star is watching, it's a good game. Uh, take all the time <laughs> you need. Like we're oh, not yeah. even angry. We're right. not remotely mad. Just I know delays, people, pitchforks. We get it. But if you're gonna make a super polished games, just take your time. Take no your time. Kidding. Please. No rush, please. Yeah. I'm, I'm can't wait. I'm I'm glad that they delayed it if they needed to because if yeah. they rushed that I would be I would I would feel really let down honestly. Yeah. It yeah, looks like absolutely. it's coming together so nicely. Oh my god, that looks so good. That looks so good. I would okay. watch the trailer again, but we need to move along, I think. <laughs> yes. We shall. All right. Uh the next game, uh <laughs> I chuckled this name like a couple of times, but the game is called Soar and Fairy Together Forever <laughs> and it is not <laughs> <laughs> it is not a Disney game. It is not a Disney movie title. Um, it's not? So it is not. <laughs> okay, so a little backstory, right? So previously, this game is known as Sword and Fairy 7. It is an action uh, RPG that's based on Chinese mythology by a company called Softstar. Um, and that is being renamed as uh, Sword and Fairy uh, Together Forever. Uh, as it is being released on PS4 and PS5. Now, I know many of us are probably hearing about this game for the first time, but this game series actually dates back to like 1995. And this is actually the seventh installment. So it's not like some random like Chinese company just decides to make a game. Like mm -hmm. they've been making this game, the series for a while now. And I, I, I don't know for sure because I don't really 
follow this particular one, but I think this may actually be the first one that's like widely available in the West. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but of course, known as Sword and Fairy Seven, um, and it's actually immediately available on PC. So that sounds like something you're interested in. But if you want to wait for the PS4, PS5 version, it's going to be called Sword and Fairy Together for and for. Okay, let's take a look at the trailer so people know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. <laughs> This is, I couldn't stop laughing at the name. I, 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 God, I, I, I know I'm just being immature, but just like together forever. Oh, together forever. Oh, why? Okay, that looks pretty cool. It, it is. It is a really good looking game. But yeah, together forever does sound. Just please fire whoever gave you that name. Like, but keep your like game development staff because you know they made they made a great game. Just. God, that name. I bet it sounded way better in. Uh, you said Chinese. it's a Chinese developer, right? So in yeah. Chinese, probably sounded way cooler. Ah, <sighs> probably. I think this is made with like Unreal Engine. Thing? Unreal, Unreal Engine. Counter enemy tactics. Oh yeah. By staring at them. So like you know, this is kind of like that like crouching tiger hitting dragon kind of mm -hmm. like Chinese martial art, not like the Bruce Lee kind of Chinese martial arts. If yeah, that makes the sense. Uh, like the the wuxia, the mythical kind, the flying around with swords yeah, kind. Yeah, like I think they usually refer to that as like wuxia or wushu, right? Something like that. I have no idea. <laughs> like that, the theatrical like hidden wires. Extremely. Yeah. 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 That's rad. Oh yeah, fun stuff. And stuff. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, again, this game is immediately available on PC via Steam. Us, Sword and Fairy 7. It will come out in August 4th on PS4, PS5 under the new name, Sword and Fairy Together Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Together I Forever. I can't. This is such a bad name. Great looking game, but terrible name. Fire that guy, please. Is, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I think I think that name is cheesy enough that it'll actually probably be memorable enough. It'll it'll move <laughs> units. It'll it'll <laughs> meme itself into success. And speaking of it's together a... forever, Valkyrie uh -huh. Profile, Leneth, and Valkyrie Elysium are it's kind of a double feature that we're gonna be talking about today. Uh we're gonna be talking about these two Valkyrie games together mm -hmm. forever. Um <clears throat> so <laughs> So uh, this is an enhanced port from the PSP version of the game uh, for mm -hmm. PS4 and PS5. This is going to be released on the PlayStation Network on the 29th of September this year. It appears to be digital only so far, though. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's the uh, the Valkyrie Profile Leneth uh, title. But uh, moving on to the new game, Valkyrie Elysium is an action RPG that will follow the new Valkyrie named Maria, who has been uh, tasked by Odin to prevent the Ragnarok. It is notable that this title is not developed by Tri-Ace, though, uh, and is instead by Soleil. So you want to take yes. a look at the, the new Valkyrie Profile Elysium, I'm sorry, yes. Valkyrie Elysium trailer. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You know, I, I would have liked for them to call this Valkyrie Profile Elysium instead of Valkyrie Elysium. It's just like, I, I keep wanting to say Valkyrie I know. Profile. Like I can't, can't help it. <laughs> I agree. It it definitely makes me want to say Valkyrie Profile of the Elysium as well. Yeah, but I'm out here looking for something. Some things. Being in the state it is. Valkyrie, my words. Okay, I feel like she looks a little better in this trailer than. <laughs> yeah. Just a, just a tad better, right? Uh huh. It must have. I mean, that was like the, the early, graphics. you know, that was like an early model. Yeah. That's why I was like, not gonna be too harsh about it. Like they, now that we're coming close to release, like it, it, things change. Square Enix must have figured out what to do to fix the graphics via. <laughs> via well, a, they did it with a <laughs> survey. Are you sure? With a survey, exactly. <laughs> Never gonna let them live that down. I just want Never. To make things right. 
I do like the vice acting, acting though. Yeah, and the honestly the skin texturing actually looks pretty natural. I gotta say, at least on some of the shots. I mean, I like this over Divine Force for. Yeah. For for sure, just. This looks. I mean, the, the skin texture is miles better than than Divine Force. I can't. I'll still play it, but yeah, of course. Not happy about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy about it too, but I'll still complain about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, this game is great, but man, that skin texture sucks. <laughs> that does look pretty cool. The uh, the combat. It's still a little bit, you know, warpy, little flashy. Mm -hmm. I I really think that they're kind of going for more the and I know people say Dark Souls, but like when I look at it, I I see more East like modern East gameplay than Dark Souls gameplay. Because when I see like the sword movement, I don't feel that like weight. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like it'll punish you for making like the wrong attack like a, a like a Souls game would. Uh, it's a little flashy, a little faster. And also, you got like these like partners, like AI that will be around you to help you and whatnot. So that feels more like East A. Yeah, so you're East actually nine. seeing some actual gameplay here. And yes. yeah, it doesn't look I'm as scary. weighty. You're, you're, you know, it definitely doesn't have that. I feel like that's one of the unique things about the, the uh, Dark Souls, the, um, and, and the Monster Hunter games is like you have to commit to your attacks. It's kind of like it's kind of like jumping in uh, the early Castlevania games. Yeah, yeah. a little bit more, a little more actiony. I think a little less punishing than uh, probably uh, what's that recent called uh, uh, the, the, the Final Fantasy Origin. Probably gonna be a little less uh, punishing than that. Um, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Well, but you know, with the option to scale up the difficulty, because I think that's very important. Yeah. Well, so I think that I think that trailer looked pretty dang cool so far. Yeah. Uh, again, that's coming out on the 29th of September uh, for PS4, PS5, and then um, on the 11th of November, it's getting a release to PC via Steam. Uh, now, there's also a pre-order available right now for physical and for digital versions of the game why would anybody pre-order a digital version i don't know but uh for ps4 and ps5 digital deluxe edition you will also be able to get valkyrie profile leneth game um not so for the pc version though that's right yeah all right so, so you know so for the pre pre for the pre-order for the deluxe edition you get these like in-game items and like okay you know what just going back to what uh was it was it josh or jason earlier josh was, yeah it was josh. josh okay Listen, Josh, if you're listening to this right now, um, just going back to what you were asking about collector's edition, deluxe edition, that realm of things, the absolute worst thing they could give us is these digital items because digital items means nothing. If, mm -hmm. and, and it's limited time. It's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta, you can only get this on pre-order bonus, get this digital item, get the sword or whatever. I haven't even touched the game. You know. I don't know what the sword does. Like, yeah, you can give me numbers. They mean absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, it's 50, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a $5 value. Straight. It's like, well, that's what you it, think. Cause you priced it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's a five star sword. It's like, what does that mean? I have no frame of reference. I don't know. Like, the, so yeah. yeah, that's the absolute worst. So yeah, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Get some help. Yeah, stop it. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a question for everybody because this has been plaguing me since like Valkyrie profile on PlayStation. How exactly do we pronounce this word? Uh, I, I, I don't even know where I, I, ein her har, ein her jar. What, what do you think, Derek? Um, if I had to guess, I'd say it probably sounds like, uh, let's see. Um. <clears throat> Oh, hang on, I'm hang gonna on. I'm gonna post it in chat, right? Uh, Just so yeah. people know what the heck we're talking about. Yeah, I inherit jar. Yeah. So. Oh wait, 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 no, hang, hang on, listen. Inheriar. 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 Is, is that? In, does that? Did you, did you guys think that's what it sounds like? 
So it, in Harry R. In Harry R. They said it in the trailer. Hey, I, I get that they say in the trailer, in but Harry I R. don't assume that they are correct. Because the Japanese developers still Touché. I do not but that I do is, not assume that they're correct. But that is what Google <laughs> says uh is mm. the American pronunciation of the word. Um the American pronunciation. Which is uh, I, I'm i I'm surprised <laughs> to learn that, that is a word. Um let's find yeah. out what that means. Well, so I knew about this because um of Valkyrie Profile One. And, you know, they, I think they said something like on Harry R, right? Which is close to what. Okay. From, so it means uh, a warrior Google. who died in battle uh, as the warriors in North mythology who after death are sent Makes to sense. Valhalla by the yes. Valkyries to fight mm -hmm. for Odin in the Ragnarok. So. Yep. Makes perfect sense. So, why mm -hmm. they picked that. Yeah. It's yeah. just, I don't trust their pronunciation oh, at yeah, all. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I wonder if there are people in um in the chat who are just like oh i am an expert in norse pronunciation it's like uh, you know what listen there, there are all kinds of people who are into all kinds of things on the internet so one of you might be just like a scholar in norse mythology and could just like totally school us in all of this and i'm oh yeah that. yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure. I'm deferring to the chat's wisdom here i'm deferring to yeah. google's wisdom with the how to pronounce guide <laughs> Ain Harrier. This is a Google Ain lie. Harrier. See that? This is like Google lied. They're like Google lied. Well, <laughs> take it up with Google. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I, I, it just, it's just a thing that like just bothers me so much. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, speaking of not being able to pronounce uh things, uh, the di dial field. Uh, is it, is it di well, you thought it was dial field, but it was me, Dio field. Anyways, uh, I'm going to say Dalfield. The Dalfield Chronicle. Um, no new trailers, but uh, the pre-order pages are now up with a slew of pre-order bonuses. Uh, the Digital Deluxe Edition will include some yeah, in-game items, the kind that I loathe. Again, just uh, whatever. Oh, you get a Night Spear. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. It does not entice me. But it does come with a soundtrack and a digital art book. So if that's something that you're looking forward to. Uh, you know, maybe the digital deluxe edition is what you're what you're gonna get. Now, we do have something that we want to show you because uh unlike uh Valkyrie Profile, this one actually has a collector edition. It's actually a really interesting one at that. Um, so speaking of collector edition, uh you wanna hop on over to my screen really quick, Derek? You betcha. What have okay. we got here? Oh, no. no. we, we've got ourselves a very interesting uh, box here. So this is the Dial, Dial Field Chronicle uh, Collector's Edition set, uh, which comes with this uh, beautiful uh, box, uh, very premium. But, you know, what we're really looking at is a, it's a, it's a, it's a board game. Mm. They came up with a board game as part of the Collector's Edition. So people, again, uh, Josh, uh, cool uh, collector's edition. Is this cool enough for you? Is this is this worth your while? Like, mm -hmm. look at this. It's a, it's a freaking full-on board game. Some people like tabletop games. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, for I mean, $100, though, I mean. Yeah, just, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's 100 bucks for a board game, 100 bucks for <laughs> a board game made out of cardboard and, mm -hmm. and cardstock. I mean, mm, there's some markup going on there, I think. Um, but Hey, what else, what else is there? Like there, there's some die. Are those little, uh, plastic and, standees? And are those oh, little plastic standees? Yeah. Acrylic. Are they acrylic standees or are they just like They're... acrylic bases with like little cardboard stand, like standing uh, up? in? Them? No, they are acrylic acrylic. Okay. Okay. Uh, look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are acrylic. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, acrylic acrylic. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. comes with all these like you know game cards and all that i mean it does take time to try to get a game working although i wouldn't be surprised if they took like some existing game uh and made it their own yeah uh, but they're also pins oh, look at these look at these hey. beautiful pins i was gonna say <laughs> hey, those pins pin. those pins mm -hmm. are so far the coolest thing and i know square enix would have charged at least like 80 bucks for those pins alone <laughs> exactly these are metallic pins, so there's I can tell. that. Uh, Those are awesome. Yeah. Those are the uh, enamel enamel pins, which are, yes. you know, the best kind of pins. 
little pricier. Yeah, so acrylic stands with the right. board I game. can't complain then if they got the pins, but does it have a soundtrack? <laughs> does it? I don't uh, know. I, I, I would hope so. Here. It might be a digital. Uh, uh, item. Yeah. Da, ba, ba. Da, da. I guess yeah, CDs da, da. are kind of a dead ba, medium ba, at this ba, point ba. for a lot yeah. of people. So <laughs> I feel like soundtracks are kind of harder to come by. They're a little bit, little bit more specialty items at this point. So maybe download codes. Uh, I think some company has done that where like they'll give you like a PS like PlayStation download code. But like, you know, this game is cross platform. So uh, I, I think I guess the only way is, you know, they give you like a download code that's redeemable at Square Enix, which I think could be a thing that they could have done mm -hmm. like and like oh yeah enter your redeem code and they give you a link to download it you can download it like uh, a couple of times maybe like 10 times i don't know like all right yeah well you know yeah, what so this whole this whole mm -hmm. dio field dio field chronicle thing i think i have a solution here um yeah and that is what does it say in japanese does it have a uh does it have like a japanese spelling uh you know that is a good question, and I don't know. But why I look at that, uh, yeah, so back to the whole bundle thing. Oh, yeah. This is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, this game, this 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 board game here, this whole thing, that's like the commemorative like board game, right? So yeah. you can bundle that with the actual game or, or not. It's just, just buy this thing, you know? Yeah. You can bundle it for a discount. Buy right? it separate and then, and then handle the logistics separately. And yeah. You know, you're gonna have two different SKUs anyway, right? One for the collector's edition, one for the actual <laughs> game. So why not just why not yeah. just sell the game separate, I guess? That's yeah. I, I, a solid I, I point. just feel like that that's sort of like the new approach to this. Uh and that's why I was saying like look as we continue, we go on and we talk about that, you know, the news, like you're gonna see like an example of that, and that's exactly what that is. And I cannot find I'm trying to type in uh, Japanese, but uh, you know what? You you want to go ahead and just move on. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can move on. Or, uh, actually, oh wait, no, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh I oh, never you find it. Can't find it. No. Uh, it it just it's spelled in English. That's why I, I can't. Oh. <laughs> it's not written in katakana. That's not like oh, okay. It's not giving me any like clues as to no how clues. to pronounce this thing. Oh. Yeah, no clues. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, okay. well, it was um, a, worthy, it was a valid attempt. Worth a valiant I'm sure effort. If I, yeah, I mean, I'm sure if I take longer time to actually find. Oh, never mind. I found it. It's Dio. <laughs> it is Dio. Dio. Yeah. Um, I I finally found a Japanese uh website. It it took a second. Yeah. Dio. Awesome. All yeah, right. So there cool. you go. Glad we could settle <laughs> that. Thank you, yeah. Baku. All You're right. You're welcome. Well, um, want to move on to uh, the next section of news here? We got some anime news Ooh. that we can talk about. Yes. Okay. I, I I see that you have not signed on for that, Derek. Wow. <laughs> you know I. Yeah. Well, you know we'll we'll talk yeah. about it. Yeah. No. I I I got this one. I got this one. All right. I mean I I wrote this, so I I think I should take care of this. All right. So uh yeah. So in in more somber news, uh this one's a little bit serious. I did mention in Twitter that we've got some bad news, and here's the bad news. Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga creator uh, Katsuki Takahashi uh, has passed away, uh, unfortunately. Uh, this is in according to uh, Okinawa News report. Uh, Katsuki Takahashi, the creator of the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, uh, passed away at the age of 60. Um, so what happened is that a boat, uh, you know, that was traveling uh, off the uh, coast of uh, Nago uh, in Okinawa Prefecture, had discovered his body, uh, and uh, they were able to identify him the next day uh, as Takahashi. Uh, mm -hmm. He was wearing snorkeling equipment, uh, so uh, you will see that a lot of uh, outlets is already um, basically uh, stating that it is a snorkeling accident. However, uh, as you all know, we don't like, uh, you know, reporting on things that's not necessarily accurate mm -hmm. uh and in this case uh i want to just stress that the police and the japanese coast guard are still investigating in uh the circumstances of his death so please uh do not jump into uh conclusion although you know it, it does more most likely uh that to be the case uh still um we, we just want to be extra careful with uh touchy news 
Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just, just talking a little bit about Takahashi for people who may not know uh, who he is. Um, Takahashi started his mangaka career in the early 80s. I think, in, in fact, his first work was in 1982. Mm. Uh, he then launched his most famous work, of course, that everyone knows, Yu-Gi-Oh! in the year 1996. And throughout the years, he's been... Uh, you know, involved not just the creation of the manga, but also with the animation of it, which actually a lot of mangaka won't really touch. They sort of defer to these production studios. Not so for Takahashi. Mm. Uh, he's very hands-on, very involved, very passionate about the projects, uh, you know, up until, you know, even in, in more recent years. Uh, in, in a lot of the creation he's still very like involved uh with this project so uh you know the, the absolute legend uh in the anime world uh and he will be missed yeah that's man that's that's such a sad story because it i mean it's it's a sad day when anybody passes right um yeah man it's it's especially sad because it's going to affect a lot of people who continue to enjoy his work uh, to this day, and you know what? What can you say? Obviously, his work is legendary. Uh, so it's uh, you know it's really just it, it will be yeah. his his absence will be felt by many. Um, Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, was it? I mean, most recently, uh, Bandai Namco actually handles the Yu-Gi-Oh games, and obviously, the most recent one is a card game. I just can't can't remember what it's called right now, but it's this wildly popular so hey if you guys are you know into these kind of uh card games maybe give Yu-Gi-Oh a shot uh you know it, it's got a huge player base uh in fact uh there, there are a lot of tournaments uh, around that so <clears throat> you know definitely look at for a robust card game uh look no further all right well yes uh, moving along from that very sad news we have some sort of sort of uh, it's it's big news. I'm kind of glad for this news. It's also bittersweet, though. Uh, so, in industry news, the PAX organizer Reed Pop has uh, officially taken over E3, which um, which I I'm happy with. I think personally speaking, E3 has been mismanaged, and I've I've not hid my uh, my feelings of uh, not caring about E3 very well over the, the last few years. Um, but anyways. For those of you who don't know who Reed Pop is, they own Game uh, Gamer Network, which operates Eurogamer, GameIndustry.biz, VG247, and Rock Paper Shotgun, in addition to running PAX or the P Penny Arcade Expo. So, uh, Lance Fensterman, I hope I said that right. I think I did. <laughs> uh, president of Reed Pop said that the company will bring E3 back in 2023, having listened to feedback from the gaming community and would keep what is being worked about in the, uh, in it, uh, let me read that again. And will keep what's being worked about the event. Uh, oh, okay. I got it now. So, <laughs> he will be keeping what worked about the event while reshaping that which did not work for the event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, and I'm it's very curious. It's been a curious. long day, Derek. It's been a long day. <laughs> it has. We both we both had a yes. long day of work today. I'm very mm -hmm. curious to find out what they think worked well for E3. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look. To be fair, right? To be fair, E3. It's it, it the you know it has its glory days, right? Oh yeah, like, it definitely you know, did. So it, it did something right, yeah. uh, but whether or not that something is still you know works with the time because of the way that the media uh, is is uh, you know transmitted, right? You get a lot of mm -hmm. live stream. You know, got a lot of method of live streaming things that are just way easier, way more platforms that can do that, uh, you know, than what maybe like the glory days of E3, you know, what even worked well before may not even work now, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, questionable. So I guess I do have a counterpoint for my own skepticism here, and that is that mm -hmm. other expos still exist and are still doing pretty well, like cons uh, CES, Consumer Entertainment Expo, uh, mm -hmm. where they um, where they like show off the newest and coolest technologies, like 
super mm -hmm. cool TVs, super cool VR headsets, you know, and, and different CPUs, GPUs and stuff, uh, which is, which is great. And I mm -hmm. feel like for the most part, like there is a place for that sort of thing for video games, but I feel like a lot of video games also like you don't have to see it in person. You don't have to feel it necessarily in person to kind of get a feel mm -hmm. for it, especially at this point, you can do a, a online presentation and, and convey a lot of that. But what that's really not going to work so much for are for like VR games. I feel like where mm -hmm. you really do have to have a real VR headset to experience it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how necessarily E3 will be able to harness that, that, that power, that, that energy that they need. Um, mm -hmm. But it's definitely, gosh, it's, it's kind of like, it feels like I just heard that the organizers of PAX bought the, uh, the, the electronic gaming monthly magazine, right? It's like, <laughs> they, like, yeah, EGM was freaking awesome in the mm -hmm. heyday when that was like one of the most reliable sources you had for video game news, but now you're getting mm -hmm. the news straight from the horse's mouth. Right. So it's like, why it feels, it feels like they bought a newspaper. <laughs> like, okay. Well, eight, we'll eight, see what they do. People are getting the news from us right now. That's, that's true. Well, yeah, we are, but we're, we're an aggregator, right? We're, we're an aggregator. <laughs> that's, that's, and, and, and I mean, the, the fact that, aggregators can exist basically proves your point you know yeah that's um, true um yeah so uh yeah so the, you know okay well so back to your point right like things you know these game shows like, tokyo game show is the thing no mm -hmm. one ever complains about tokyo game show everyone looks forward to tokyo game show that is true. um yeah so especially especially people who like japanese games like Especially us. people who like Japanese games. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, people like TGS. So, you know, having E3, you know, it's, it's an option, right? But we also saw what didn't work out so well when, like, the Summer Game Fest. It was, I, I wouldn't say it's disastrous, but it was just so lackluster and mediocre and boring. Like, they hyped it up. They hyped it and hyped it. Oh, we're going to replace the void of E3. You know, a lot of... A lot of big talks, and it was just like seven like horror space shooters, and then yeah. like yeah, I'm I'm just like yeah. Even if you're a fan of this genre, I think you're getting bored of looking at this. Um, so it was just super lackluster after all the hype. Um, so you know, I I'm very interested in seeing what they do with E3. Uh, I think if they scale it down and just like really bring it to earth, and uh, you know, have 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 more of a celebration of the game rather than like we're just here to make announcements. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice. Like bring bring the folks from the industry, have some display, really go all out, celebrate the gamers. Uh, put put the people in first, right? Mm -hmm. Then, and instead of putting the companies first, I think yeah. you're gonna have a much better show. And you know, they and they do do that in packs, which is why I'm a little more optimistic because they've demonstrated that they do can run these events, and they have demonstrated that they could do it well. So. I've thoroughly enjoyed every packs that I've attended. Um, yeah. So. And I, and I guess that what I also wanted to say on this topic is that it's also kind of interesting that let's, there's kind of a chicken in the egg scenario going on here where uh, people would show off games at E3 because E3 had the respect and the eyes of the people on it, right? Um, but now they've kind of squandered that a lot, right? So, so what's... What's going to bring people like Nintendo back from doing their Nintendo Directs, which have been immensely popular over the years? Uh, what's going to convince them to start showing games at E3 again? What's going to convince Sony to, to stop doing their state of play and, and start showing games here instead? Um, you know, what, what are they going to be able to do to draw in those eyes and that respect mm -hmm. from the community again that will re-engage the uh the developers and the and the console manufacturers it's it's going to be an interesting thing to watch play out i think yeah i mean it can't just be like a game announcement thing it's got to be a little bit more interactive it's got to be you know like like a convention where mm -hmm. like hey i'm going there it's going to be fun 
there will be, it's almost like a theme park. Like you have to be there to experience this. You know, there are displays and booths and, you know, like maybe like large scale, like displays and mascots and like, you know, all kinds playable of playable game demos. Like, playable mm -hmm. game demos you know it, it it's got to be like again just like a celebration of gaming right like yeah. if you can do that then i can see it because then you'd have a reason to physically be there and not yeah. just like oh here's the next game that we're gonna release in two months well yeah you can do that in the direct already what couldn't you do mm -hmm. well that's what you couldn't do if you have to have like a physical presence yeah, and 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 create this sort of like oh, it's almost like a PR uh kind of thing. Like oh yeah, we're fun, right? Like look look what we have at our booths, right? Um, and had just have the game companies compete with having like crazy wild booths, you know? Uh, I I think that could be a, a fun thing they could try. Yeah. Well, we'll. Yeah. I look forward to finding out what they do, and I hope that they succeed because they'll have to do something wild to succeed. I think. Yep. Well, we'll see what happens. But yeah, hey, if you guys got some ideas for E3, uh, not that I think they're going to read our comment section, but I sure will be. Let us know. Yeah, and we'll talk about it in the next step. All right. So this next piece uh, has to do with something that we talked about uh, about uh, maybe two weeks ago. We told you that uh, Lollipop Chainsaw is getting a remake uh from uh dragami games uh now we've got a little bit more news on this uh in their somewhat coordinated statements uh one of the original writers uh, james gunn and the famous over-the-top director pseudo 51 who you all would know from uh oh what's that one game called um mm. oh god <laughs> i had it contact. in my head contact mm. Uh, just uh mm, oh did, did you uh, know more hero contact? oh that one <laughs> no more hero yes oh, okay <laughs> like no more hero uh, uh you know who also worked on uh you know uh lollipop chainsaw uh both of them said that they will actually not be involved uh with the remake uh project so for any fans out there of uh, james gunn and suda 51 who are just really looking forward to the involvement again unfortunately that will not be the case uh still uh it is not unusual for a uh uh you know creators to come up with you know sort of like baseline ideas uh for a game or a piece of media to then not be a uh, part of like a remake or revival because you know they're really there just for the inception uh so is, this is not like unusual uh and they have also stated that this is not really a combination of you know of any kind they're just stating the facts that they're just not involved so that you mm -hmm. shouldn't expect them to be you know part of this that's all is not like positive or negative it's just yeah. stating facts i mean i don't think so, they really oh, have yeah. to be in, involved honestly if it, it's just a remake mm -hmm. basically a lot of their yeah. creative input is is already baked into the game so mm -hmm. just, yeah 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 so you know don't take it like the wrong way uh, of them coming out have, having say this i think it's more reactive Oh. And so like, oh, are you working on this? Oh, man, can you tell us something more? It's like, yeah, no, I'm not working on this. Sorry, go bother someone else. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. That's 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 what we've got. So if we hear anything else about this game, uh, we'll be sure to let you know. Awesome. Well, uh, we do have a little bit of other news here. Uh, in a recent interview with IGN, Square Enix producers Yoshinori Kitase and Mariko Sato shared more information about the uh, CC reunion. Uh, so the idea for Crisis Core reunion is that it was uh, born towards the end of the Final Fantasy VII remake development. The story yeah. will stay faithful to the original game. Sato said that visually the game is going to be up to the standards of Final Fantasy VII Remake, and in addition to getting updated graphics and interface, the game will also be fully voiced with an all-new voice cast and with new musical arrangements by uh, Takeharu Ishimoto. Yes. So, the game will feature a new menu-based battle system uh, that is based on the original Digital Mind Wave, or uh, DMW, system. <laughs> I keep wanting to, I keep looking at this. I keep seeing DMV. And it's just... I know. I, I almost said DMV <laughs> as well. DMW. And, DMW, uh, yes. And also Sato told IGN that various improvements have been made. Oh, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> he said that. Um... Nope. 
Various also, improvements have women. been made. However, the core elements, such as the story and <laughs> story, are grounded in the <laughs> original. Oh, 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 is she? Oh, I, uh. I think so. Mari Mariko sounds like a, a a female name. So, oh, you are <laughs> correct. <laughs> Well, I'm committed now anyway. But, but, but go on. No, no. You All know right. what? You're, you're, you're double down. Go ahead. <laughs> However, as the core elements, such as the story, are grounded in the original work, we call it a remaster. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it a remaster? Is it a remake? I don't know. Where do you draw the line? Yeah. Where do I, you draw the line? Where Where do I draw the line? I don't even know. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so I, I guess, uh, here, I mean, here's another question for all of you folks, right? So having heard that, you know, here is, here are all the things that they're doing for Crisis Core Reunion, right? The story will stay faithful. That means they're not changing the story. Anyone who thinks that this uh, is going to be a remake that's going to align with, well, the remake, it's not. This is, if anything, this is going to align to the OG game, right? So mm -hmm. they're going to stay faithful to the story. So no change in the story. Uh, but visually, it's going to be up to the standard of Final Fantasy VII Remake, which means that basically all the models are redone. Uh, uh, so it's not just a simple, like, remaster or just, like, or any kind of HD remaster, right? Okay, yeah. so there's that. The interface will be changed, and that's fine. Uh, it will now be fully voiced with a completely different voice cast, which actually a surprising amount of people were very upset about if you looked at Twitter lately. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. A lot of people were very upset that uh, they, they're not bringing the old Zach back. Oh. It's a completely new cast. Okay. Well. Uh, new musical arrangements. Um, okay. So there's that. The The Battle system is basically redone uh, with inspiration from the past one to various degree. We don't know. So at this point, is it a remaster or is it a remake? And I would submit to you that this is in fact a remake. Yeah. If you have to redo an entire system and rebuild models, you are remaking the game. With, oh yeah. You know with a you know with a script that was done before, which is fine. I, I don't think that's a prerequisite to mm -hmm. doing a remake. Yeah. So, I, so I think at this point, it, they should just like not like dance around and just call it a freaking remake. Already. I feel like if they did, though, people would be like, what do you mean? You're already making a Final Fantasy VII remake and that's different. It's because they already basically destroyed the meaning of the word remake with Final Fantasy VII remake. I feel like that's yeah. that's got to be why. Because it so so just to to kind of further inform people about what my opinions are about remake versus remaster, I feel like that mm -hmm. they get their roots from like what they used to do with movies, right? Mm -hmm. Movies when you would remaster them, you are taking the original movie and maybe doing some processing on the film to make it maybe 4K or something, or you're you're doing mm -hmm. something to the original work as as the starting point of reference, right? Whereas if you're remaking a movie, you're refilming everything, you're recasting everything. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you are no longer using the original game as its as your starting point, then it's not a remaster anymore. It's remade. That's, that's what I that's what I think. If I have to, if yeah. I have to pick between the two, of course, I, I'm seeing chat right now with like all kinds of re words thrown in there. I'm mm -hmm. just saying if I have to pick between the two, which are most commonly used words to talk about a thing, uh, I would submit to you that this is now a remake. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> I oh, doesn't want to dance around the line anymore. Um, but yeah, but hey, what do you guys think? Uh, think about it, because, man, this this is interesting. And, and leave you know what? To, I, <laughs> leave it to Square Enix. Chat. Leave it to Square Enix yeah. to just completely, like, redefine <laughs> words, man. Just, like, just, you know, original meanings be damned. Just Throw them out there. That's fine. We'll just use our own words and we'll make up what they mean. Uh, if, uh, Final Fantasy VII re-engineer, that's, that's going to be a thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a thing now. Uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, this, I, I, you know, I'm super excited for this game, by the way. Uh, yeah. So whenever that comes out, I, I don't remember, but it's like sometime like later this year again. Oh, like this winter, I should say. So <sighs> yeah. it could be. Yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on. 
uh, let's talk about some merch, shall we? Because oh, yeah. you guys like merch. Uh, so we've got ourselves a a, a, a bit of a, a collaboration between uh, two giant company, uh, to your delight, Nintendo and Lego announced Ooh. that they will be releasing a new building kit to build a Bowser, which is really fun. Actually, looks really good. Uh, I I I I I'm I was like really big like Lego nerd. Uh, so I I just love seeing this thing. Uh, it, it's gonna be a massive two thousand eight hundred plus pieces kit that involves a, a lot of moving parts: the head, the arms, like the legs. It's a bunch of moving parts. Uh, and the kit will actually run at two hundred and seventy dollar at launch on October first. Oh. Yeah, but wow. you want to take a look at it over my screen just to give people an idea what that looks like. You bet. Man, 270 bucks. Ooh, that is yeah. almost as much as a figure of the listen, same size. Listen, Legos are not Oh my cheap. god. That is Yeah, but look at that. It's cool. That's a lot of custom pieces too, I think. Like the yeah. the the fingers on mm -hmm. on Bowser, those are definitely not standard Lego shape. Those are I I I I I really like Lego. I just don't have time to build anything anymore. But like, if I was retired, you you bet I'll be building Lego kits all day. Dude, that would be uh, a fun stream. I think to build a Lego Bowser. Did, did you know that like Lego building is like a thing on Twitch? I knew that Maple uh, does some Lego day streams on her channel yeah. on Twitch. Maple yeah, creature. Maple creature. Yeah, Maple creatures definitely do Lego builds. Uh, but like, no, Lego building is like a. thing. Thing. people love watching like lego builds on twitch it's, i didn't know there was a thing until well until until uh, maple creatures started doing it mm -hmm. and i started getting involved with some of their community members and i'm just like wow this is like a whole thing i know right so yeah it's, it's really cool you get to live vicariously without spending all of the money on lego <laughs> 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 it's expensive man it's expensive but hey you know what you, you're getting you know twitch uh you know uh what is it donations and bits and subs and that's subsidizing your next the, set, uh, the habit right? yeah. exactly exactly <laughs> exactly. So, exactly well all right speaking of expensive stuff derek yeah tell us more about this we got a new special edition not a collector's edition though it's just a very special edition that nintendo is releasing a splatoon 3 themed nintendo switch oled on my birthday it'll go for three is it your birthday uh oh not right now but it will be on august 26th Ooh. so it'll go for 360 dollars <laughs> Three hundred and sixty doll hairs. Okay, Wait, hold on. Time out. What is what is what is an OLED model cost right now, though? Less than that. Uh, OLED Switch right now. No, it's three fifty. Is it really? Yeah, OLED Switch is three fifty. This is only ten more dollars. That's what? actually not bad. Yeah, I'm looking at Amazon. Three hundred and fifty dollars on Target. Three hundred fifty dollars. GameStop. Three hundred forty dollars. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, hey, let's but take no, a, $350. They, they have a they have a they have a trailer or rather a teaser or something. They got a thing yeah. on YouTube about this. So let's let's look at the thing. Yeah, let's look at the thing. So it's looks like that. There's a, a there's the in this yep, the dock, the handle, the Joy-Con. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty rad. I like that. No, it looks really good. <laughs> that looks a lot it better. It looks really good. It's too bad it's Splatoon themed and not something cool like an RPG. <laughs> you know, wouldn't it be nice if there was a Xenoblade Chron 3 Switch Nintendo? Mm. If it, oh, if it had those a... if it had those cool colors, I would buy it. You know what? If they made a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 uh, Switch, I would lose it. I oh, would man. instantly, I will find a link. I would walk away from the show right now and, well, and buy it like immediately. Baku, if you if you got the Nintendo Switch Limited Edition Xenoblade Chronicles Edition, I would really highly recommend that you don't lose it because that sounds really expensive. <laughs> Probably $360, you know. <laughs> Probably about that. Okay, so you know, I saw that, and I was like, it's, 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 I mean, it's ten more dollars than like the regular Switch, but it, I, I guarantee you, it's gonna hold like way better value. Like limited yeah. edition consoles tend to hold. I mean, much it, better value it just looks way cooler. 
I mean, yeah, it's ten more dollars. I mean, the, the fade, I the fade between colors, that looks so clean. Oh yeah, that that gradient, it looks amazing. Um, and you know, I, I don't actually know if it comes with the game or not. Uh, so there's that. But hey, yeah, probably so, not. Hold up. Yeah, mm. maybe not. That's okay. It's just the limited edition, but that's cool. I mean, mm -hmm. if if I cared about Splatoon, I would be all over it. Yeah, well, I already have two Switches, so I, I'm not buying a third one. <laughs> That's damn sure. Understandable. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I bought a Switch for my mother to play Ring Fit. That hasn't worked. <laughs> no? <laughs> Wait until she retires, which is soon. I, I think once she retires, I'm going to, like, get her to play uh, Ring Fit, like, on a daily. And she's going to be way more fit than myself. <laughs> Maybe you should play uh, Ring Fit. Well, I well I have been. I, I put it in my living room, right? So I have yeah. my personal switch down here where i play all my rpgs and all my save because transferring save between switch is a pain right so i'm not mm -hmm. doing that but then i have like the workout switch uh upstairs that just basically does nothing but just plays like ring fit because i don't feel like moving up and down i don't feel like sharing a switch with my mother if if i yeah. would convince her to just like i'm just like here you go this is like your own unit uh and i got her the <laughs> i got her to I got her the Dragon Quest um, Switch in case she doesn't want it. I'm just like, well, I still have a Dragon Quest Switch. <laughs> That's fine. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, Ring Fit's actually surprisingly really fun, guys. I actually have a copy. I need to play it. I played it once a while ago, and it then I, really fun. <laughs> I felt really bad because I couldn't do much on it. And so that actually set me mm -hmm. on, a, on a weight loss journey of my own that I'll talk about some <laughs> other day. Um, but yeah, so I should play yeah. it again at some point now that I've lost a bunch of weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. In fact, maybe that could be a stream idea. How about community goal to get Derek to play uh, Ring Fit on Twitch? Baku, what are you trying to do to me? You you knock that off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shaman on Twitter. <laughs> um, all right, what else you got for us, Derek? Um nothing <laughs> oh wait wait well, I, I guess got something <laughs> okay you get you got it you got it oh yeah, sure? yeah, yeah i see it okay yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. on on related news <laughs> oh 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 tell us more <laughs> the splatoon 3 themed nintendo switch pro controller and carry case will both launch alongside the game on the 9th of september so that's right yeah make sure you check that out as well yep, yep. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're we're winding down. We're heading towards the fan and community project and and news. And man, I this is this is a hilarious one. All right, so check this out. Okay, so one diehard uh, F Zero fan for anyone who does not know, it's like an old school like racing game uh, on Nintendo uh, consoles uh, in Japan. Spent about five million yen, which is roughly. $40,000 US to buy more than a hundred shares of Nintendo stock just to give him a chance to attend the annual shareholder meeting, right? And you're wondering why would he want to do that? Well, he wanted to go there to ask the executives just if the company has any, any plan at all to bring back F-Zero. So the man goes by the name of Momiji in Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and he did say that he did say admittedly that although he had purchased enough shares to gain access to such a meeting, uh, he wasn't guaranteed to get a question in that actually was just kind of a bonus, but he did, uh, manage to talk to, uh, the Nintendo president, uh, Shuntaro Furukawa himself, uh, when asked, uh, if, uh, <laughs> Nintendo has any plan to bring F-Zero back, uh, Furukawa responded in the most corporate way possible. In, in, in translated quote, it is realistically difficult to develop new titles and remix, including sequels for every Nintendo game that people request. But we are very grateful and appreciate the expectations our fans have of our games, end quote. <laughs> And, and that also, is not thanks the for most... the money. <laughs> <laughs> and also, thanks for the money. <laughs> uh, well, I'm waiting. Okay, you know, but and I was gonna say this. Look, listen, I have Nintendo stock. Like they're, they're not bad. Like I, I, buying forty thousand dollars worth of Nintendo stock is actually not a bad investment. <laughs> yeah, 
not a bad investment. There are worse things you could invest in at this point. There I are suppose. worse things you can do with forty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like going to Vegas, bet it on black. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Derek, if if you get to ask and tell anything, if you could be Momiji San, if you're sitting in that meeting, you're not an F Zero fan. What would you ask? Oh man, I would. I want to see if I'm right about this. I I have a I have a feeling. I mean, would ask, but go ahead. It, there's really just the one mystery that continues to elude us, and I feel like I know the answer. Um, okay. and I've made, and I've made a video talking about the answers, um, mm -hmm. about the reasons that Nintendo will never bring mother three to the West. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it would be nice to get some, just a solid real answer from somebody. Um, right. cause, cause the closest thing we've gotten to an acknowledgement of mother three in the West was that E3 where, <laughs> where, 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 where I knew it. <laughs> Where he freaking like lit a, a fan on fire for asking about Mother Three. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't remember his name off the top of my I head right it. now. I knew it. I knew it. You knew know it. I was gonna bring that up. I Reggie. knew it. Come on, it. Reggie, bring up Mother Three. How about this instead? <laughs> 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 I mean, like that's uh, that's the closest thing we've even gotten to an and an acknowledgement of Mother Three's mm -hmm. existence in the West. Uh, from anybody at Nintendo, and right. it was lighting somebody on fire for asking about it. So I feel like that's a, a bit uncalled for, but I would like to get a real answer from somebody. Um, well, the answer you get is, uh, it is realistically difficult to develop new titles and remakes, including sequels, for every Nintendo game that people request. But we are very grateful and appreciate the expectations our fans have our eight games. Sorry, that that is the exact same quote that I'm gonna give you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel like I, I like get a that. Canned response. I got that, and <laughs> wow. If You're I welcome. got that you, response, you didn't have to spend. I, you didn't have to I spend forty thousand dollars. You just made this. that real. You just made that real for me. By the way, <laughs> you just made that real because because it dawned on me. Like as I was as you were saying that, I was like, wow, that is that is a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> Oh my God! I told you if if that is not the most corporate like response like from executives, I I don't know what is. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't spend 40k on that answer on that question, but yeah, I mean he's <laughs> again to be fair, he spent 40k to buy stocks. Stocks will appreciate, so is it an investment? But stocks you know, only just, go up. Yeah, uh, but his intention is to be at that meeting. That's what made this like news worthy. Mm -hmm. If yeah, that makes sense. Like he didn't buy it and just so happens to go. He bought these stocks with the express intention to attend this meeting. Yeah. So hopefully he can ask this question because he's such a huge fan of the F Zero series. It's he just had to know. He couldn't. He couldn't let it go. He put his money so, where his mouth was. That's yeah. hey, that's something, man. You know, good for him. He voted with his wallet, and and his yeah, voice no, was heard. And, yeah. So and. Yeah, it's not like he gave it away either. Like it's he yeah. can just sell. The he can sell it again. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's just whatever. Yeah. yeah, I guess he can't get his Stonks. trip to. Yeah, he just can't get his trip back. <laughs> but I mean, I bet that was a fun yeah. trip anyway. <laughs> right? I would go. I would go. Uh, if I had forty thousand just laying around, I I'd, I'd do it. I'd do it. All right. Uh, this last piece of news is also another fun piece of news that I think you guys. Would Joy, uh, and that involves the living legend himself, uh, Let Me Solo Her. So, some time ago, we talked about uh, Let Me Solo Her and the guy just to, uh, you know, refresh uh, everybody's memory. There's this boss in uh, Elden Ring, um, I, I think it's called Melania. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But basically, a super, super hard boss that a lot of people will have trouble beating. In Elden Ring, there's a system where you can summon a player to help you. And one such legend uh, named uh, Let Me Solo Her would do just that. And they'll ask you to just stand back and just let them solo her, Melania. And they have done it upwards of 2,000 plus times to the point that, you know, everyone knows this living legend. There are people who will spoof this person. Uh, and it's so notable that people are cosplaying as this person. 
uh, because this person was just going with basically a fishbowl and no armor and just do a world, uh, you know, this boss to death, right? Yeah. So uh, Bandai Namco obviously noticed the meme and noticed the trend and just want to give a little something to, first of all, thank uh, uh, Let Me Solo Her for uh, helping the community, uh, but also obviously to give them all that like media coverage and hype. Uh, they they sent him something very special. Now that was uh, yeah. some months ago, right? Mm -hmm. Now we finally know what they sent. Do you over. remember what predictions we made? I don't. Do you remember what prediction we made? I remember that we made predictions. I thought they would send him a pot, a replica pot, <laughs> that that he wore <laughs> on his head as part of uh, as his costume. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Uh, but no, that that's not quite it. Okay. Um, what what else did you think they would send him? I think you might have said a figure of his own character, or maybe of oh, Melania. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I I, I was I, I guess I'm a little closer. Uh, there there is some kind of uh you know that boss related work uh mm -hmm. in there. Um, so are you are you ready to take a look at uh what they did send him? I'm ready. I've been curious for a while actually. All right. So uh and and if anyone wants to follow uh uh, uh let me solo her on Twitter. Uh, actually, if you want to switch over, oh, here, I'll throw that. Already. Yeah, yeah, I'll throw the link into the chat. Yeah. All right. And, and show your screen here. There we yes. go. Okay. So take a look at this. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to follow uh, uh, Claim oh. uh, Zuboi, uh, this, this is actually uh, Let Me Solo Her. This is uh, his handle on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, uh, thank you, uh, Bandai Namco and Elden Ring for giving me this gift and congratulating me for being Let Me Solo Her. That must be cool just to have your own hashtag like that. I know. Super awesome. <laughs> I can still remember my first experience with the Soulborn series and almost quitting because of this uh, boss that I'm not going to try to pronounce in Dark Souls 3. I am glad I persisted and, and here is the boss box that they sent them which is super cool see look commemorative item look at that i yeah. i would buy this for like a thousand dollar maybe i don't know a um wow well wait until you see what's in there okay. uh, probably more than a thousand to be honest so there is like a woodwork uh sort of piece of the boss right so okay. something to do with the boss uh -huh. there is a handwritten letter uh there's a handwritten letter here uh, that basically <laughs> says congratulations on your great accomplishments from Bandai Namco team. Super awesome. Yeah. And it's got the little sketch of him. <laughs> right. Loin cloth and a pothead. <laughs> Gotta love it. I know. And a whole freaking sword. That's rad. A whole freaking sword. Um, combat ready. <laughs> yeah. Combat ready. Uh, okay. So let me read on with the next part of the tweet. Actually, hold on. How the heck do I? <laughs> is this is one out of three. I, I know the tweet continues. Uh, I can't see the next part of the tweet. I, I know I'm bad at Twitter too. It's okay. I am terrible at Twitter. Is uh, that it? Two of three. There it is. Uh, oh, there two of three. Yes. Uh huh. Went on to enjoy the game because uh, this community is one of the most passionate and dedicated people I've ever seen in the game, and I'm proud to be part of it. Many people shaped me to who I am today, including Vati, Fighter, Pi, Iron Pineapple, Chase the Bro, and Zuli. Uh, and, and here are more uh, screenshots, of, like the up close of the piece of woodwork that they have sent uh, yeah. over to him. On the back, uh, you know, it says from Ooh. Software Bandai Nago. It's one of 40 of <laughs> those made. That's interesting. <laughs> Either that or, or actually, that hold on. What is that? What does that mean? Yeah, 11 mm. slash 40. 11 out of 40. Mm. So you mean I can get this somewhere else? Maybe. Uh, there, there, there is a map uh, that they had rolled up. So that, that whole thing that they rolled up, that's actually the map of, uh, you know, the continent, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sword itself that says Rise Tarnished. Which uh, cool. probably means something in that game, but I haven't gotten far enough to know what that means. I'm sure chat knows what that means. Let us know what Rise Tarnished means, like the significance thereof. Uh, and then there is the third. Uh, Limited Breakers, uh, Bonfire VN, and many others. I hope they know that they have inspired me to be who I am today and continue to be awesome. Thank you, everyone. Let me solo her. You, sir, are a living legend. So there you go. That's what Bandai Namco sent them. 
That is so cool. Super, super awesome. Ah. Uh. That's that's, that's such a cool looks story. So cool. I know. I'm I'm kind of so, I'm so cool. I'm kind of jelly. It's yeah, it's just a really a little bit. It's well, a pretty listen, rad replica. No need to be jelly. All you have to do is you know beat the boss like a thousand times. I'm on. Well, it. Other people. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I yeah. do believe that that's about it for the news. So let's go ahead and take a quick gander at some of the super chats the people have been uh, throwing at us here. Um, yes. Um, which is not loading for me. So let me figure that out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> let me read some, uh, chat. They said, um, it means get up. Uh, you're the tarnished first thing they tell you. Okay. Get up tarnished. It means, uh, you are on the ground and need to stand up. Okay. So in my defense, okay. When I booted this game up, I was not paying attention to the story because I was also doing a charity stream and I was eating. Oh like, yeah, that's right. And you you were forced I, I, to I was, like take shots and stuff also at the time. I was, I was taking shots and I was eating like Carolina Reaper, like spice, like, um, peanuts. And then I vomited. Uh, so I was not paying attention to the story. At oh my all. God. That was like the last thing I was paying attention to. <laughs> also, I was also playing the game with the controller upside down. So, like, okay. In my defense, <laughs> I have I have uncovered all of the super chats, and there's a bunch. Okay, so okay. Uh, from Bring Back Flippy Dogs uh, says Baku, I've changed my mind. I am now on Team Zippers for hoodies. <laughs> I. I think that's I'm glad that we read that because Team Zippers, I'm I'm kind of down with Team Zippers as well, personally speaking. I I like I like I like Zipper hoodies, I'm telling you. They're they're the best. Got another one here from Diana Lopez who says, Zipper hoodies for me. Also glad I could catch this stream. Love you both. Hey Diana, welcome back. Yeah, Diana. Um, glad you're able to catch this. Thank you so much. Uh bring back Fluffy Dog says collector's edition fund initiated. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let us know what kind of collector edition you've been uh, getting, because I'm I'm very interested. If you guys have gotten any like cool collector edition on games, I'd love to know because I kind of want to see. I kind of want to see what's like cool for you guys. I mean, what's cool for me is not cool for like everybody else. I got a figure, so you guys don't care about figures. Like some of you guys want like an care LP. About figures. Yeah, you kind of you kind of care about figures. You want an LP or a figure? Uh, LP. See, I want a figure. <laughs> that's, what I'm saying? that's understandable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah i i, I want to know what you guys think is cool in a collector's edition all right cetra blues says congrats on securing your youtube url baku hey also, thank you also derek looking forward to that breath of fire video i'm <laughs> playing through the very first game after watching your game collection review and loving it cheers Ooh. Oh awesome. man, the Breath of Fire Thank series you. has been such an awesome series. Um, I'm actually remaking this video or or not remaking, but making this video has had me walking down memory lane of like all of the RPGs all that I've played in the series. And yeah, mm. yeah, it's it's got me wanting to actually play them again. And I think I am actually might have an excuse to replay Breath of Fire 2. Um, they've got this fan retranslation patch that, uh, Oh, nice. I'm super okay. interested in, uh, in checking it out at some point. Mm. Right. Are you sure you want to replay it now or wait until they like announce like a new breath of fire and Ooh. then replay? Well, we'll find out. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. Who knows if they actually will or not. So rather than just like assuming that they will and never playing anything, cause I, because at the moment, it feels like a dead series to me. You know what I'm going right. to do for you, Derek? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to buy $40,000 worth of Capcom stocks. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'll march right on over to the annual meeting whenever. Actually, uh, their fiscal year is around like February. So uh, next year. Okay. Next year. I'm going to plan ahead. Next year, I'm going to fly over to Japan. I'm going to march right on over. I'm going to learn Japanese. Just to ask the executives if they plan on bringing Breath of Fire. Just for you. Incredible. <laughs> I appreciate your dedication on my behalf. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even care like that. But you know what? Just for you, Derek. 
So speaking of Breath of Fire, uh, Bring Back Fluffy Dogs says, Derek, when is the moratorium up on your deal with Capcom to produce a Breath of Fire YouTube video to coincide <laughs> with the announcement of the Breath of Fire 1 through 3 collection for all modern platforms? Thank you in advance. Mm, uh, that would be that would be cool if they did that, actually. That, yeah. that would be really cool. Call me Capcom. Mm. <laughs> uh, I want to be a Capcom Or, or creator, did they yeah. already? Mm, I don't know. Mm. I guess we'll have to find out. Now, Still Alive, threw in another uh, message here, says, I just started playing Dragon Quest VII on 3DS, and wow, it is a long RPG. What is, <laughs> what is the longest RPG that you have both played? Do you oh, recommend God. them? Uh, you know what? Go ahead. You go first. What is the longest RPG you played? Uh, okay, so it's hard to, to say for certain. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that if I count both, if I count both of these, uh, it's probably Persona 3. Because if it's Persona oh, 3, Fess and Persona 3 is the answer. Those two uh, combined. Because mm -hmm. the first one was like 120 hours followed by another 30 hour second chapter. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise it's probably something like oblivion or, or Skyrim or fallout. Mm. I mean, cause those games go on forever and ever, but for, as right. far as Japanese style RPGs, um, it's probably breath. It's probably, um, persona threes FPS, the journey and the answer. It was hundreds, mm. 150 hours. It was a lot. Oof. Uh, hands for me, hands down again, just Japanese style RPG, which is basically all I play. Uh, hands down, Tactics Ogre. Really, the, the original and the PSP, uh -huh. uh, going through every single route without a guide in the original one. I don't even know how many hours that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, tactical RPG takes a while to clear each stage already as you may know yeah uh and going through going through without a guy trying to figure out every path because guys weren't really a thing back then <laughs> on super nintendo age i know so yeah it's gotta be oh jeez i i want to i i almost want to say it's gonna be like three maybe even 400 hours in that game oh my gosh uh, yeah no just a lot of trial and error uh reading japanese half-baked <laughs> young baku knows mm. a lot less japanese than i do right now <laughs> yeah. and there were no english patches so yeah there you go no oh. guides no translation figure out every path how to get every single secret character by trial and error you know if if we we're expanding beyond japanese rpgs i suppose that i i i would probably recoil in horror to find out how many hours i put into runescape as a kid if I, Oof, if, if I could find escape. out, if I could find out how many hours of my life sank down the drain into that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's, let's, I, I better probably mm. never find out the answer to that. Um, there you go. <laughs> still alive. <laughs> Glad to know that you're still alive. Bring black, uh, bring back fluffy dogs. Once again, says we, the chat have decided that it shall be breath of fire one through four. Pass this along to your Capcom handler. <laughs> duly noted, duly noted. Because, I mean, let's be real. Of course, it's a collection of Breath of Fire 1 through 4, because those are the, the really good ones. Uh, Breath of Fire 5 is special, mm. but it's it's not really something I would include in a Breath of Fire collection, you know? Is, is that also on PS2? Uh, Breath of Fire 5 is exclusive to PS2. Yeah, it's just I don't know what happened in PS2. That's like that's where a lot of series went to die. PS2. Yeah, uh, the Mana series. I mean, just uh, the uh, saga, uh, the saga series, uh, kind of went there to to not make another game for like another decade or plus. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, something yeah. about PS2, but <laughs> just yeah, that was the last week yeah. No, no, it wasn't because that was also on PSP. But we never got that mm. in the West. Um, yes. Last main line, at least. Um, yeah. And then I don't even count handhelds. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me refresh here just real quick. See if. Got any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do. We got we got a couple other here. Uh, bring back Fluffy Dogs now says uh, quotes out of context for T-shirts. Maybe you should play Ring Fit. 
<laughs> You're welcome for the free merch slogans. <laughs> well, there you go, Derek. You you need to you need to make that into reality. And then uh, still alive with another one here says second super chat of the week. What is your biggest gaming regret? For instance, one regretful time I threw away my Nintendo Power Collection. Excuse Sadness. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. would you do that? Biggest, <laughs> biggest regret. Ooh. Um, oh, biggest regret. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, along those lines, I'd have to say there was a time when uh, I was fresh out of high school and and uh, living on my own and I was hungry. So I sold mm -hmm. a lot of GameCube games along with my GameCube, um, including like Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, um, which at this point is not inexpensive um you know the zelda collection uh titles the um oh gosh i had biotin kaitos on there i still haven't recovered a lot of the gamecube games that i ended up selling um i sold um dawn of mana i don't regret that so much yeah dawn of mana was not a good game <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, some, some games did get sold for, for groceries at some point. So unfortunately mm -hmm. that's, I don't know if I can regret that because it did, you know, give me sustenance, but it, it mm -hmm. definitely feels like a raw deal in hindsight. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you had a choice. Yeah. So it's not really like a, a, a fault. It's, you choose life over like a thing that appreciates like. That would have only matter if you stayed alive. Get stay alive. Uh, um, yeah, my big regret, uh, and this one is, uh, I think, a more actual regret is uh, letting a friend borrow a um, limited edition PSP, and then for him to have lost it. Lost it. Yeah. So I had a limited edition Crisis Core PSP, which I got for my birthday from yeah. another friend, uh, and and I don't think he has ever forgiven me for like letting someone else borrow and then subsequently having it lost. Uh, so yeah, definitely friendship ruining moment right there that I highly regret. Uh, yeah. You know, and I had not been able to find uh, another. Uh, replacement since now, of course, I can, they I can be your replacement friend, Baku. No, I, I, I meant the system. But, you know, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <Anyways>. <laughs> I meant the PSP, but okay. Um, yeah, no, they do sell, uh, you know, Crisis Core PSP on eBay. The problem is, uh, I can't tell if any of them is real or not. The one that I had is definitely authentic any other ones i can't say for sure so and the ones that i can probably say for sure that are still seal is probably like upwards a thousand dollars or something so yeah definitely not happening are there a lot <laughs> so, of a lot of fakes in circulation at this point uh i would imagine so because uh at some point they were selling like uh you know shells that you can just like install so it's, oh. hard, it's hard not to imagine that you know someone would buy like a plain psp put in some limited edition shell and just like sell those for like a mock-up right yeah like, i could totally see that it's just like a white yeah. psp with some decals on the back right yeah oh it's a, it's a silver one with like a number like etched in so it's like they only made like oh. i think seventy thousand of them or seven thousand okay. or some something to that effect Mm -hmm. uh so there's a limited amount but yeah but that number could just you can just forge whatever number you want like it doesn't mean yeah. anything right so and, you know anything can be faked in from especially china it's just like they're just master at like bootlegging literally anything so yeah never going to buy one from ebay which means i'll never get another one so that's my big regret oh bummer well yeah yeah i feel like your your regret is more regretful more oh, more yeah, regrettable that's... I should have said no. Good one. Yeah. But I've I've since learned to say no to a lot of things. So good lesson in it's, life. It is a good skill to have for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I do believe that that wraps things up for Super Chats today. 
Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, if you enjoyed today's podcast episode, please be sure to give it a like here on YouTube or on your podcast streaming platform of choice. And uh, I guess we will uh, see you guys all in the next one. But until then, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you not this Sunday, but the following one. Baku, any yes. closing thoughts? Uh, closing thoughts? Uh, really, thank you, all of you who showed up to our just like last minute deciding to do this on th Thursday. I mean, jeez, no. like, I would have missed it. But yeah, for all of you who like didn't miss the show, extra extra thank you uh for being here yeah y'all are incredible all right Man. have a great night everybody night